Ona tuška, to kije. Elijah Hopkins Demier, Wana Wak Chinja Wakpa Dechia Dayanya Hiripido. Um welcome again, relatives, to the uh, Fort Peck Community College uh, traditional educational knowledge presenter series. Again, we have uh Tahanshi Jeremy Redigal uh, with us again to do a, a presentation 
Uh, today's topic will be land-based learning, land-based knowledge. Um, and again, we have uh, Dek Shiwaye, Mr. Tommy Christian uh, joining us. So, and together uh, we form this, this uh, dynamic uh, trio to, to cover uh, the presentation regarding, um, you know, some basic things regarding these medicines and plants that we all like to use for, for smudge and for medicine to eat all these different types of things. And so we, we are streaming live on Facebook. Um, before we get started, you know, I'd like to ask Dekshi if you would offer a, a prayer for us in a, in a good way. Can you hear me, Tushka? Oh. Oh, that's it too. Oh, Diana Hippi Mitaki Epi Ushima Lo Chewi Chasha Mia Lo Naha. Oma Kia Naha wa Chekia Sente wa Ste Ambe Tukile Naha. Kohe Chajemi Ta Wam Nisha Gate Doba Ima Chiapi Ushima Lo Oma Kia. Aha He Atu Kashela Na Wakantanka Tadaria Doba Unchima Kana Makaina. Naku Mitaki Epi Wanagi Makria Ektaya Gate. Ocho kaikta hiopo, ushia kenitaki api naha won spikia, we chasha bilen, we apile, chaku washte unk upina, woyawa, wayawa, oyateki naha, koshkapi, we koshkapi, na we chasha bina, we apile, chaku washte unk upina, tu washake unk upi, okia, ushu we talapo. Atu kashila na wakantaka. Oyate oyasi chaku luta aga omani o chapiapo ushui talapo. Awa kantaka gitsiapo mitakiapi agitita oyate ki zuya ekta, vichasha bilen weapile, zuya ekta, naha chaku washte unk upi okia wa ushui talapo. Ah, my grandfathers, we come to you on this beautiful day. We ask that you continue to pity us as we try to do these things as well as we can and as common people we come to with an understanding that. As we pursue this greatness that you have provided for us, that we can experience and understand the importance of our purpose and dedication as we continue to walk this red road of understanding. And as we do that, we do that for the sake of the greater good, and we continue to do these things. So we welcome uh, my nephew Jeremy, my nephew Elijah, and all those that support them in their efforts to kind of share these experiential ways in a good way. We ask that you watch over them, their families, all of their extended families in a good way. So with that, we want to thank them for this beautiful time we're going to spend together. Oh, me daki e oasi, wama kashka oasi. Um, and I guess before we get we get start a discussion here, uh, just remind our listeners, the students, uh, uh, employees of the college that are on the Zoom call. If you have any questions, we're just going to visit more or less um, for about an hour or so, and then towards the end of the discussion. Um, if you have any questions, we can uh, open it up to, to any um, possible questions. But even during the conversation, feel free to utilize the chat if you're on the Zoom call. On the bottom there, just put any questions that you have in there, and we'll certainly do our best to, to address those. Um, and then a couple other things. We, we are going to be making some uh, selections for the uh, Buffalo Chasers um student leadership development program this week. So just be on the lookout students. If you're, if you're on the call or if you're uh, joining us on the Facebook stream, we will be making those announcements directly to those that were most of which were, were eligible, but there are a few just weren't quite eligible, but we're still going to try and reach out to them and include them in all of them in various ways. Uh, so again, just be on the lookout for that. So again, I want to thank uh, Tanshi Jeremy uh, for joining us all the way from Tokanoa Makoche. Um, you know, again, uh, I won't go through his bio again, but uh, Tanshi Jeremy is a, he has a passion. He's a Dakota, and he, he follows these the, 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 these ways and this understanding of how uh, the, the earth is important. It's, it's a, a way that we can, and I've seen him through the years. He raises his children, his family, um, through an understanding of, of knowledge with with the earth, and, and and so he's he's really a great source of inspiration. So I'm glad he could join us today. And, and as always, Dexhi is a wealth of information. He really guides our podcast series as a cultural liaison. And even before that, he's always involved, volunteers his time to help the youth and the people here on Fort Peck. And he's known really far and wide uh, through through his, his participation in ceremonies and as a Yapaha for powwows over years and years. So really look up to both these gentlemen, uh, and I want to thank them for for joining us. And so, uh, so gentlemen, the you know the topic. Um, land-based learning, land-based knowledge. 
uh, I've noticed uh, in academic literature uh, for the past, you know, several years, contemporary times, there's this term, it's called, uh, the acronym is TECH. Uh, they refer to as traditional educational knowledge in the academic literature. And, and that has a, a place, the academic side, but I also think that um, when we, we, we gather like this and from an indigenous perspective, we try to just not tell people as Dex she says, but just share information. And so in that type of format, you know, just kind of let the discussion go wherever it needs to go. But, uh, but again, I want to thank you guys for, for joining us and um, uh, turn it over to one of you gentlemen, if you want to just get us started. Go ahead, Jeremy. I, I'm, I'm here just to listen and help you get some good ideas and whatnot, but how oh, welcome uh, Tushka. Good to oh, see you again. Yeah, so, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I, I visit with our elders a lot. I spend a lot of time with them, and that's how I teach myself the, the, the little bit that I know. You know, I don't proclaim to know anything. But, you know, I read books. I, I research things, but I really believe in our elders. I believe oh, that oh, they yeah, possess yeah. the knowledge of who we are and where we come from. And so when Tanshi Elijah asked me to, to talk about this stuff, I had to think about like, you know, there's so much, so much to talk about. And yeah. one of the elders I work with, he, you know, everything is connected. Everything is, you know, you can't just talk about one thing. It's all connected. So I was thinking about where do we start when we talk about, our land, we talk about our medicines or any of these things. And so to me, ahana, you know, it goes back to the creation, oh, the, the beginning of time. Oh. So with that, I was thinking about like our creation stories and, and where we originate and what the, the, the variance is in those stories because <laughs> we have a, a common uh, one that is shared and that is coming out of Wind Cave in Chesapar, the Black Hills. Oh. And, and that's good and I respect that. But then like with our elders here, there's other stories, there's other creation stories about where we originate from. And I've heard uh, from uh, Cannonball talk about where they originate out of uh, Heart Butte from Spirit Lake. Some of the, 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 the Eastern Dakotas talk about Bodote or Malax Lake and you know, the emergence from those places. But one thing that my elders here, um, they could, they call this place, uh, one of our elders here, he says, Paha Sapa Chistina, he said the little black hills, because we live on the Kato here. This is really flat. This is the prairie, you know, it's just as flat as can be, but where we live is the Kato and it's, it's raised up. And it was, they were just talking about it this morning, how it was made from the glaciers. The glaciers came in and kind of pushed that that land just enough to where it created these hills that we live in and there's a place here that they call the continental divide and so i kind of researched that a little bit because i found this old writing where they talked about how the sasituan people a long time ago believed that that was the center of the universe because in that um in, in where that continental divide is you know if you speak about it like scientifically it's a place where the waters flow to both the east and the west, yeah. you know, and there's, there's a couple different continental divides in the United States, but to our people, this was a, a special place. And then there's another spot in that same area where the continental divide exists here in our hills, where they say that you experience winds from all four directions. So to us, we believe that this was, you know, the center of our, of our world. And when you research and talk about like, like anthropologists or the Washichus in the history books, there's a lot of debate on like where we originate from, your Bering Strait theory, all these things. But then as Suan speaking people, they claim that we come from down south by North Carolina and those places. So it was real interesting when I started working with our elders here and um, we had a Kushi here. She was 99 years old when she passed away about two years ago. And she would speak all in Dakota and she would tell these history stories that were handed down to her. Nothing, she never read anything about this. It was all oral tradition. And she talked about when we would, when we left here and we went down south and we went and lived in a place where they said, um, 
they say uh makoche omashte hechun ki pi he ahadeshka tanka otapi you know like we lived in a place where it was there was sunshine and there was alligators you know yeah. and so when you think about it, and they they talk about how then we came back we we left here because of for whatever reason we couldn't survive here and and maybe that was during the ice age i don't know but either way they say we left here but then we eventually came back and then you can connect all these other stories that you know talk about this and kind of reaffirm this you know so our oral history is very strong it goes back mm -hmm. thousands of years it goes back to the beginning of time and i think that as dakota people we need to learn to have faith in that because our people have been dumbed down for a long time of, of what's been done to our people. And we start to rely on formal education or books or things like that. But yet our elders are, they, yeah. they still possess that knowledge. Yeah. So we start there. That's the foundation of where we have to go back to. So we go back to, to look at our land and what it meant to our people pre-contact and then even up until recent years, and even today, it still is very significant to our people, but it's changed. It's changed over time because of everything that's been done. And today, science still has a lot to offer. So we can still take things from a scientific perspective because really Dakota people were scientists. Yeah. You know, they were, they, they knew, they, were, they observed because that's what science is, is observing and knowing your surroundings in the natural world and what's going around. So our people were true scientists, but they were also scientists like on a spiritual level at the same time. So if we can learn to go back to that foundation and then incorporate things from the modern world that might uh, help us with what we're up against, because today specifically talking about here in uh, we were surrounded by agriculture. It, it, we're surrounded by it. And so today there's big fights to stop these oil pipelines, which is good. I, I support that 100%. But we also need to look at the bigger picture that it's not just the pipelines. There's all kinds of stuff that are destroying our, our planet, destroying our earth, destroying our, our homelands. And so for us here, agriculture is a huge one. G GMOs, pesticides, the, the um, taking advantage of our tribal members when it comes to leasing their land, all of these things. And then our tribe gets sucked into it also because of financial reasons. So we have to look at all these things. So we sit, our reservation sits on one of the largest water aquifers in, uh, in the United States. And it's being jeopardized because they have uh, cattle farms, these dairy farms that use thousands and thousands of gallons of water a day. You know, and they're taking that water from us. And that's that's our water, but yet we we struggle with our idea of sovereignty and what that looks like and how to stand up for those things and to create, you know, the, these our own laws within our own nation to protect those things, let alone trying to get the United States government to honor those things. So here we have a checkerboard reservation, meaning that we lost our boundaries back in the 70s because of a Supreme Court case. And so they don't honor or recognize our boundaries. They recognize just the pieces of land that are still held in trust by the U.S. government, yeah. which is it like we can fight that because there's other tribes that have won those kind of cases and say, no, they still fall into jurisdiction. So Oklahoma is a prime example that that just happened down there. So that's something hopefully our tribe will be moving forward with. But so when we talk about our medicines and we talk about our land, those kind of things are really important because today where we live, we, have, we live where what they call the tall grass prairie. So eastern Montana is the prairie, but then as you come out to eastern South Dakota, Minnesota, all down into Nebraska and Kansas and Iowa, they refer to that as the tall grass prairie. So it's a little bit, it's a different ecosystem, different medicines. And we were, our people here have always been well known for medicines. You know, Lakota people, other tribes, they acknowledge the medicines that our people had here because of the ecosystem, it, it sustained those medicines. Now that's being jeopardized. The tall grass prairie is the most endangered ecosystem in the United States. And they say in Iowa, it's like less than 1%. It's like 0.01% of the, the natural prairie that is left there. And so 
Minnesota, you just cross the border and go into Minnesota and all you see is cornfield after cornfield after cornfield. Here, you see a lot of agriculture, but because of the fact that we're in the hills, we still have a lot of our natural prairie left, but it's very little, you know, compared to what it should be. So I started to learn about this. I, I had a, a teacher at the college who um, she purchased land and that's what her purpose was, was to do prairie restoration. So her whole purpose was to take care of the land. The main piece of land she had had never been broken. It had never been tilled before. And then she had another section that had been tilled. So then she wanted to, you know, learn what it takes to restore that to its natural state. And what we found is that it takes well over a hundred years. Once you, once you tear up a piece of land, it takes way over a hundred years to bring that land back to its natural state. And even then it still will not fully go back. So how does this affect us when it comes to our medicines and our foods? Timpsina, Timpsina is a prime example of a yeah. food that where surrounding my house is what they call CRP, meaning that this land was broken. It was tilled and farmed at one time. And then the federal program of CRP of allowing these fields to go back to their natural state. But even after all these years, you'll still not find Timpsina growing in that land because that soil takes thousands of years to compact and be the way that it needs to be for the Timpsina to be able to grow. So even with these, these restoration projects, it, it, never in our lifetime will it go back to what it should be for our, our native plants. So it's very important that what we have left, that we protect it. And if our people aren't educated in that, you know, we need to, we need to develop houses. We need to develop businesses. We need to do these things to sustain our tribe. But we ourselves are continuing to contribute to destroying of, of our environment because we're not educated in those things and we don't know those things. And then on top of it here, we're, uh, since we're a checkerboard reservation, we already have a real small land base to begin with, you know. So then we come into today where we are experiencing this resurgence of our Dakota, our Dakota Wichoha, which is good. It's what we want. We want our young people. We want people to come back to our ways, to come back to our ways of praying. And then we know that it's more than that. Our ways of eating because of our... Uh, health epidemic that we have diabetes and cancer and heart disease all these things so the best way to do that is through our traditional diet and we know that right but in addition to that is the, the food sovereignty itself is like when COVID hit and then we had this fear that grocery stores weren't going to have food all this stuff like how are we going to feed ourselves so food sovereignty is a huge thing right now but if we're not careful, we're going to continue to contribute to that destruction of our environment because we have people out now digging Timsina before it was ready because, the, because they're not fully educated in that. And it's not to be critical of that. It's to say, how can we educate about these things to, to show and teach people that, you know, our people understood these things so they knew when to harvest. And if you look at the natural world, when you start in the springtime, like why not, you know, right now is, is becoming spring, the snow is melting. From now until fall time, there's a process for every single thing. And they all kind of go in line with each other, whether it's the berries, the medicines, the roots, the, the hunting, the fishing, they all kind of go in a season, kind of in a domino effect. And they, that, that happens for a reason because that was the only way we could survive. It was difficult a long time ago to be able to, you know, you had to put in a lot of work to harvest these things to sustain you through the winter time. And that's what one of my uncles, he, he told me, he says, the minute that it becomes spring, it's not time to go and enjoy yourself and have fun and bask in the sun. He says, as soon as spring comes, you are already starting to work to prepare for the next winter because winters were so difficult to survive through. So when all of these medicines, all of these things that grow, they would grow in stages. And if you watch, you can see where as soon as one thing is ripe and ready to be harvested, then the following week or two or a couple of weeks, then the, these other things are, are ripe and ready to be harvested. And it goes all the way down until fall time when right before we're going into winter. 
So we have to go back to those teachings of understanding when, where, how, and why did our people use those things. And we always have to be thoughtful of not just being selfish of what good is this medicine or this food do for me, but how does it affect the ecosystem? If I harvest it or if I take it, how does it affect every single thing else around it? And so once I started to become educated on this, then I start to notice everywhere I drive, everywhere I go, it doesn't matter where, I look at the land. I look at the land and I see what kind of state is the land in. One thing our people used to do was use fire. They burn things and they're for multiple reasons. There was more than one reason why they did that. But of the biggest reason was that the fire itself helps the land. The, 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 the grass grows back healthier and stronger. There's things that, you know, in that, in the ashes and the, the fire itself that, that are a benefit to the soil. And then on top of that, you have the grasses grow back, you know, lush and green. Then the, the, the Tatanka, he's going to come back, you know, because he's going to, to eat off of that. And so then even the animals, looking at the animals and how the difference between the, the Tatanka and the, and the cow, you know, the Tatanka, he knows. They, they eat the grass so far down and they move on. The buffalo or the cow, he'll eat it all the way to nothing, you know? And then you have ranchers that they want the, the most money for their, you know, the, the most for their money. So they're going to let these cattle graze their land to nothing. And it happens all the time. And so you can, once you become educated in these things, you can look at a plot of land and see where this here is just really not well taken care of. It's overgrazed by the cattle. Um, they don't take care of it. And then, you know, somebody that, that is conscious of these things and actually manages the land that they, you can tell the difference in it. Or if using fire and, and using those controlled burns to come in and clean up the land and help the, the vegetation to grow back. But it's using those indigenous methods that our people live by to help manage the land. So it's not the, the Western idea today of coming in and we're gonna regulate these things because some a lot of times when we do that, we ruin it, we make it worse. But our people, because they had an intimate connection with it and they knew that, these, that, that their own survival depended on these, they knew how to, how to manage those things. And so they're, they're talking about it a lot in California right now. You know, the wildfires there are getting out of hand and they're burning up cities and towns and all of these urban areas. And the native people have been sitting there this whole time saying, you know, that's why we were doing our controlled burns that you guys try to prevent us from doing. You know, Forest Service implemented a hundred years of, of extinguishing every fire within 24 hours. You know, and our people made money off that stuff in the summertime. I did it for many years, you know, but the reality is that that's, that was really bad for our environment, you know, because then those, the forests just grow and grow and dead stuff falls and grows and grows. And now you have fires that come through and just, you know, uh, are really bad for the land because they're burning at such a high intensity because of this fuel buildup. So, no matter what you look at, there's all these things are affecting our environment and affecting our land. And so for me, like I said, Dagoas Ichukoyake, you know, so even I Dakoriapikihemakoche de Taha, you know, our language comes from the land. It comes from the land. They say that animals were the ones that gave us our language, the sounds, you know, all of these guttural, all these sounds that we have in our language, they came from the animals. They they gave us those. So when you look at the diversity of our languages, it's connected to the land because it's so diverse from the, the Mississippi River to Chesapa and everywhere in between there from Canada to Nebraska, everywhere that, that, that the Oyate lived, those dialects, those differences changed because of the land. That's my belief because it's connected to the land. So when you go from Minnesota out to Eastern South Dakota and from here to West River and then up into Montana, you have different, different um, ecosystems. And so our language changes as that happens. You know, so how can we, the only way that we're going to ever be able to fully come full circle is if we take care of the language, we take care of the land, we take care of ourselves, we take care of our food, all those things are connected. So as we go forward with this is, is educating ourselves in that thought process of how 
how do we we reach back how do we go and take time to sit with our elders that still possess some of this knowledge you know all the teachings that they had from watching the animals you know the sink bay they talk about how they build their houses and you can tell what kind of winter you're going to have because of the houses that the muskrat builds um you know, and the, the Tatanka himself, that was, you know, that's why we say for ourselves, you know, is because we resemble that because with those teachings that were given to us from, from the buffalo. And then the, the medicines, you know, that these were, uh, my, my deck sheet, Jim Redigo, he tells a story about when the animals were going to take us out because of, of how we live, which is, you know, we're there again, you know, uh, not respecting and doing what we're supposed to as far as the stewards of this land but the plant nations were the ones that took pity on us and said we're going to we'll help you you know any disease or sickness that comes we're going to help you with that you know so through time now we're to a place where those were almost forgotten and now all of a sudden we're we're going back to that which is good you know but then we have to like how do we do that how do we make sure that we know the spiritual connection to those medicines because hey you know she says you don't um you don't play with those things you know you don't you don't play with them and so as we're going back to learn about these things do we just look up in a book you know what they use these medicines for or just see it on facebook and then we go out and attempt to harvest those things and use them or do we take the time to go and and, and pray about it go spend time with elders that remember the uses of those things and take it from that approach as far as reconnecting with those things because they're it's it's a serious thing you know these medicines can help us they can they can cure a lot of the the ailments and the problems that we have today but what's the perspective that we have when we go out to to do that and to take the time with that and then thinking about those medicines and what they need what they need to make sure that they continue to come back so out here our syncbeto what they you know our, our sweet flag our bitterroot some people call it is like our number one medicine that we're known for here all of our elders you know used it growing up last year somebody went out to one of these places and they seen Somebody came out with a shovel and it was just clear, you know, cleared it out with a shovel, you know, not thinking about other people, not thinking about what, what it's going to take next year for those plants to come back and to be able to, you know, to be self-sufficient and, to, and to, to always be there, you know. So as we go into this time of bringing back our medicines and our food sovereignty is to really think about you know, what, what we're taking and what we're leaving, you know, it's a reciprocal thing, you know? And so we, so that's the, the number one thing that I want to get across to people is like, let's educate ourselves about those things. And you can research, you can look up things and there's a lot of good information out there, but then always trust and believe that the elders in your community know things. They, nobody knows it all, but if you take the time, you go visit with all these different elders, you're going to learn little things little things that they remember from when they were younger or how they use things. And that that's going to be a, the best start that you're going to have for your journey of you know, reconnecting with the land, I guess you could say. Mm. Oh, that, that she, what do you think? Well, oh, 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 Jeremy. Again, you know, all of these things as we do now, uh, and, and the, my my only concern here, we're coming out of the college is, um, see what we're trying to do is develop this uh, this catalyst of informational foundation for, for the sake of exactly what you're talking about, Jeremy, to help us understand what is our responsibility as ekche oyateki, you know, just common Indian people. Uh, and, and when I say common Indian people, that that's inclusive of everybody. What I'm really saying is common human beings. Mm. Okay? And so that's a, that's an inclusive statement. And so what is as we look inwardly as individuals, what is our responsibility? 
the other day I was sharing with uh, Coach Guy Elijah, I said, uh, judge me based on my actions, not my words. Mm. And actually, what that really was intending to share is trying to remain somewhat apolitical as it relates to the spiritual connection that you're speaking about. Eh? And so what we do is we look inwardly and say, well, that's great. That's good. We need to do this. We need to do that collectively. But there are people in those positions that need to become responsible to understand our needs and then to legislate, to the, legislate them accordingly. But not me. I'm a common Indian. I'm a common human being. Eh? They need to do that. And so as we do this and we gain that strength based on our development of our own personal character, we become stronger to take on that responsibility one individual at a time. And as we promote this sort of philosophical understanding, not theoretical, but philosophical, and with the understanding, like you said earlier, uh, all of our people back in the day, for the sake of survival on the North American continent, where we believe we came from and we, we evolved from, we're indigenous to this land, is uh, this is what we were taught. And usually that, that, that teaching, that, that understanding came from the stars and, and uh, mm. you know, all, all that stuff there. It's, it's a, uh, and so basically what we're wishing to, uh, to kind of, for the sake of um, what, what were we talking about, Elijah, uh, sustainability oh. uh, of this effort is uh, to, to make sure that we get a foundation, a base that is, that is a good sound base resources and references like yourself and others that are involved here that, that aren't out there wishing to take advantage of um, uh, and exploiting based on capitalistic uh, uh, imperialism and, and continuing to just rape and pillage the, 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 the land, but manage it. Okay? And see, that's that basis and that foundation, just like what you spoke about. And so what we're doing uh, and, and I strongly believe that treaty is the law of the land within our interior, exterior boundaries of the reservation. But at the same time, understanding in a contemporary way, um, we need to be inclusive of all of that. And so we remain apolitical until they take that stand and fight that fight and we can become uh, a, a sovereign nation as it is intended, then we'll be that. But until then, we are learning how to maintain that coexisting together, Indians, non-Indians, whatever. And what it's going to come down to is our non-Indian relatives understanding the values in which we live by, just what you spoke about, Jeremy, about how important uh, the ecosystems in our particular regions uh, are, are important to us, even toward affected the, 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 the structure of our language or the enunciation of our language. Uh, be, and that's how serious it is. And, and they can recognize that, that differentiation from regions based on the manner in which they, they speak the language. And so that's how they would utilize that. And what that represents is that diverse, that diversity that exists under natural law, but at the same time, the uniqueness based on your region that is represented there. And so that should become the enrichment and the empowerment for the sake of the growth of our children. So what we're wishing to establish here is exactly what our people like in Sisitoa over here and Wachincha uh, Wachba and the surrounding area, we need to understand our areas. Take, take, take a, a good look at ourselves and, and learn about firstly ourselves so we can be strong enough to take a position to be managers of Unchimakha. Uh, uh, and, and then we go from there. When we involve um, the political agenda that takes us away from our center. Eh? You spoke about the center of the United States. Well, it takes us away from that center. And so rather than concentrating on, on uh, something way over there, looking for the answer, the answer is right here in front of your face. <laughs> and so as we need to really look inwardly. And, and I've shared this with uh, some of our podcast representatives that, that are, were here that, from the beginning. We heal as First Nations people. 
we heal from the inside out. Our non-Indian relatives heal from the outside in. And acknowledging that diversity based on that uniqueness, it's not wrong. It's, it's just diverse. Mm -hmm. It's just different. And so once we get over ourselves, for the sake of, you know, uh, people don't understand, like, woe each other. Sonwaya. Woe each other. That your faith, eh? your belief system, Gyalbado. Is that how you translate that, Jeremy? No. Is it, huh, huh, that's it too. And so in that, you 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 understand when I speak philosophically, because we believe we didn't come from the earth per se in our stories of origin, we come from the stars. And in that we were transported here by whatever means. Uh, Spiritually, the spirit come down, go inside the mom, blah, blah, blah. I'm glad you spoke about that. And then we went from there. And as we were placed here, there's ways that our old people, Leela Hehani, you know, long, long time ago, that they talk about, like um, Tunkhanshila. That's an old, old word, eh? But people don't, they call, oh, that means grandpa. It doesn't mean that, according to me, but according to them, it does. So that's fine with them. But in that process, it's, it's something that's really old and prehistoric, even before snow, that helps all the time. That's how I'd interpret Tukashila. <laughs> but uh, again, it gets pretty heavy there in the Indian side. But what I'm saying is, in, in, in the, the philosophical approach, today, why not? Right now, is let's look at it from there. Let's, let's get it up foundation like we're wishing to establish this base at Fort Peck Community College and from that utilize these references or these resources to legitimately acknowledge where these came from eh? and so that then they can realize that um, if you want to research an Indian thing you don't send in a non-Indian <laughs> <laughs> we're finding that out a little bit more and more as we go <laughs> But did they do wrong? No, they were just utilizing the resources that were available to them at the time that they had trust in, eh? Well, now, through this evolvement in a contemporary time, you want to research an Indian thing, send in an Indian, and you'll get back an Indian perspective that would also be inclusive of a non-Indian perspective as it relates to, you know, taking care of these things for the sake of the greater good based on that Indian's vested interest in that particular land. And you see, that's how we're trying to address some of these issues of concern, establishing this basis and this foundation for the sake of resource and references so they know who to refer to. Because you get all these, some of these alleged uh, shaman or wikashawaka or kajutawaka, whatever they want to refer to themselves as. And, 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 uh, you get them out there and they're just making stuff up, eh? Just kind of really dope, chink chick. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and yet, eh, nobody asked them, who taught you that? Well, uh, what's his name taught me that? And uh, then he passed away. Like, you're the only one he taught. <laughs> like me, I got a teacher, but I got brothers all over the place that can keep me in check. So <laughs> I can't go out and lie about what I said and try to be somebody I'm not because they would definitely put me in check because one of my teachers taught so many, eh? So philosophically, that attitude continues to go on. Understanding we're not out here evangelizing about this, but we're just living it. And through that experiential teaching, that abstract learning opportunity that we've taken advantage of, just like what you're saying, Jeremy, that's how we need to go and visit with our elders. You know, uh, one of the things I was talking about the other day, I forget who I was talking to about, but it might have been Earl. But um, our, we're telling our young people, if you want to know, you go listen to an elder. Take them tobacco and, and listen to them. I, I mean, like, if I take an elder tobacco, uh, what if that elder don't want to talk? You know, because there's days we don't feel like talking. Mm -hmm. okay? and, and so... Go and uh, wh why don't we tell them, go and uh, clean that elder's yard. Guess what that elder's going to do? He'll come and sit on a chair outside and watch you work and share with you good stories, eh? Go drive that elder to uh, uh, his medical appointment. And during that trip, they're going to share with you good things, eh? 
wisdom, you know, uh, what, what do they call that? Wisdom, what's that word? Woksape. Woksape, yeah, see? And they'll share that with you. And so as you do that, uh, it takes away that um, uh, capitalistic attitude, you know, bought and paid for. I want the biggest bang for my buck, okay? And we got to kind of get away from that and just take advantage of the opportunity based on woe chada. You see what I'm saying? And philosophically, that's consistent to what, what we are doing. And so in that, and there's nothing wrong with getting the biggest bang for your buck. That, that represents our our local our, our, our economy, eh? But if I'm fool, you know, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Sort of a thing. If you get ripped off for time and time again, isn't that the definition of insanity? <laughs> <laughs> Doing the same thing over and over again, wishing for a different outcome. Well, that's why. And again, uh, Tushka Elijah, we're we're really promoting at this level uh, critical thinking, eh? It affords us an opportunity to to look inwardly, to to really realize really what is the question I would ask me I would ask me me me, <laughs> and and in that, um, you take advantage of that, because uh, um, it's hard for that to happen because like er, what Earl talked about the other day, our our perspective is one of individuality. What is my my purpose and my dedication for the sake of the greater good? Whereas individualism is about I, me, my, you know, just well, an attitude of entitlement. And a, that's what we were learned. That's what we learned. That's what we were taught. And that's what we live. We need to get away from that. And the structure in which we're promoting right now is one of discipline based on character development, exercising those virtues. You see, you see what I'm saying? And so I'm, I'm talking like this, uh, Elijah and Toshka, Elijah and Jeremy, because for the, those that are listening, so that it can plant the seed to help them think, well, what are these guys up to? What are, they, are, are they promoting Indian things? Or are they promoting? No, no, we're promoting human being things mm. for the sake of taking on this responsibility. Whatever little we have involved, at least like I was sharing the other day, you, you ride with me in my car, you'll have to sit in the passenger seat, but you'll have to have with a whole bunch of uh, garbage because I don't litter, eh? I throw all my garbage <laughs> on the passenger side, and then when I get to a place of McDonald's, I dump all my litter in there. But I won't litter. That's my little part, participation, in managing what it is, the ecology, eh? And, and in that, we need to understand it starts from within, and then we do that. Judge me based on my actions, not my words. That's what that states, and that's what that talks about. So... I just wanted to share it with you because it's such a, a beautiful thing to hear you speak, Jeremy, about all this stuff here. We want to make sure that we continue to, to perpetuate the manifestation of this uh, importance of ecology, but at the same time, how it has evolved into something that isn't very comfortable with some of us. But how do we promote that without having to set regulatory authority and take control and tell people what to do? But why don't we just, why can't we just share with them and again, people with good hearts, they'll, they'll have a, a, a choice to make. And guess what? They'll always make the good choice and they'll become, uh, their car will be full of garbage too. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, not, Tushka, Elijah, I'll, I'll share that much. I really enjoy the discussion. Oh. Jeremy. Oh. You know, and also just to piggyback a little bit, you know, when we were talking about sustainability here at the college, you know, ties into our podcast discussions and kind of what we're trying to build is, you know, from the student's perspective, uh, really a lot of this stuff got kicked off just because we're trying to utilize these digital platforms to connect our students to existing resources in the community to help them, you know, to manage through the, the COVID environment. And then we've discussed, Tanshi, like that, you know, one of the silver linings of, of, of us kind of trying to blaze into this, this new environment, at least for us anyways, in this community, is that we've able to connect individuals like uh, Dexie Palmy and get her the message out to people that otherwise were kind of a little bit more isolated. And so what we've kind of, we're hoping is that we're laying this foundation so that way there's 
pathways. And as you were talking, you know, Tasha, like with the seasonality, things kind of go in a row, you know, we want to be able to, we've already, you know, tobacco with certain individuals, you know, so that way some of our students that are already like diehards every week, man, they're, they're dialing in, you know, and people from all across the country and even internationally from uh, Dexy's uh, relations up in Canada, you know, that they're, they're tuning in. And so what we're noticing is that we're, we're trying to get, especially our, our local community members patched into uh, at least a baseline understanding of some things that, Maybe they weren't able to connect with uh, cultural resources growing up, or maybe they're, they're trying to integrate back into their their home communities back here. Okay, so how do we connect them? But when they do have an opportunity with these pathways that we're creating or trying to connect anyways, there's a baseline understanding. So when they go into it, it isn't just like, oh, wow, information overload. I'm going to tune out, blah, blah, blah. And, next year you know you want to have it to where it's like oh wow that's i remember listening to, to hanshi jeremy and dexy tommy and lexi earl man that oh okay and so that's kind of where we're, we're hoping to, to get to where it's you know and you're absolutely right and i was listening to uh tosh as far as it's all connected like for the the, the sake of um working within the system and grants and reporting we kind of have to sometimes we have to label things you know, indigenous uh tribal uh, ecological knowledge and then we we do that and that's good has a place but we're also trying to make this uh this format is is uh non-threatening as possible so that individuals can listen to it and they feel welcome and it's we're not definitely not trying to put anybody on the spot and this part of this discussion is part of the larger uh i guess a goal uh the vision of um what we're trying to do as far as creating pathways with experiential learning. So like, for example, um, if there's certain uh, ceremonies that uh, individuals want to participate in, but they've never had those family connections or anybody willing to really show them, this is what we're going to try and do for them. And it doesn't mean just because you, you come over to we want to cheap you over here by Brockton that we're going to, you know, tie you up and, you got to do it for four <laughs> days, yeah. But but at least though they can go maybe take part in setting up camp, you know, and and it's with character development when the, these an identity to me it's all about identity and you guys talk about this that's just my two cents right is that it gives them a sense of purpose and a place through an experience and it's not theoretical it's not just off Facebook even though we're utilizing these platforms there's nothing wrong with that but when it's their time and they're ready on their terms. There's individuals that are, are going to be there able to, to assist them uh, and get them to those places. And then it, it ties them back in, you know, all year long. And then hopefully that, that's kind of where we're, we're going on deck. Oh, yeah. Again, you know, just, just to kind of add to that just a little bit and, and like, we want to send up some, la set up some land-based teachings, a sweat lodge, a berry picking, sage cutting you know there's a process in which uh, need, that needs to be done to protect the future the next year's crop eh and a lot of them don't realize don't just pull it out by the by the roots great and then if you do get the root out you need that black root put that plant back in the ground and cover it back up don't leave a hole where somebody can break their leg or some cattle can break their leg or whatever that's an indication of that responsibility we have within ourselves and in that when we take them out to maybe we'll, we'll go out to a Sundance, we'll ask them to set themselves up a good camp and you don't have to do nothing, just observe. But what we'd like for them to do is realize that feeling, that spiritual aspect of that, the feeling. And guess what they'll do? They'll go start helping because they feel so good, man. Because they, they want to be a part of that goodness. That You see what I'm saying? And their decision isn't about not participating, but what can I do? What little can I do? Can I go help out the cook shack? Yeah. Can I go chop wood? Yeah. You can, I, can I help dig a hole? Yes, if you'd like. But you see, that's the part of that. What they get, what they receive from that is that sense of belonging to Unchi Maka. That's mine too. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like that. And that's the beauty we'd like for them to understand. And that's total inclusion, eh? 
our cultural way of life, our value system, it involves ekteo yateki, hu hu nupa, the two-legged. That's total inclusiveness. It didn't say the red Indians and the yellow Chinese and the black people over there from Africa and the white guys from Europe. It didn't say that. It said hu hu nupa, <laughs> all of them, human beings, the two-legged. So as we do that and we share that understanding, oh man, that's the beauty of what it is that we'd like to share, but we don't evangelize about it. We just live it. Well, I think this opportunity, like Coach Kai Elijah was saying, this uh, virtual experience is affording us an opportunity to really kind of share in a good way uh, our different, that, that uniqueness of uh, our different regions, our different tribes, but yet the basis and the foundation is our spirituality. Oh, that's it. And then, you know, these um, also just, you know, very quickly is that um, we, we've wanted to like revive uh, what's really been part of indigenous communities since forever is the society models, right, yeah. that we have that for whatever reason we're looked down upon, taken part for whatever reason, just because of um, patrilineal type of, so as we're trying to restore our identities and Part of that is with the Buffalo Chaser Society. That's why we're always getting in there with the song. And But it's something that's of um, inclusion of everyone. And we're also, like Dexia was trying to allude to earlier in previous podcasts, everyone fits in somewhere, you know. And then with uh, the WIA, uh, we want to make sure that there's spaces for them uh, at the college that they're able to um, participate eventually. Um, what was going off here? I took away my screen, but so I think with that, I think those are the the main areas that uh, we wanted to cover. And uh, Tahanshi, you know, you're already a buffalo chaser in our books, man. But we would definitely <laughs> appreciate you, you joining us here. It's part of that that uh, indigenous uh, life way that we're all trying to live and do our best to to share w- with everybody. And um, again, we want to thank you for joining us. Um, but I do want to give any students that happen to be on the Zoom call, if there's any questions that you have here. Because I see Becky Ochpaki, it's an Indian name we gave her because Obalaka, we, we couldn't pronounce that. So yeah. Obaki. It reminds me of the Huckleberries. Well, that's right. She's over where, what used to be known as Glacier Park. Um, <laughs> He's way over there where they used to have glaciers. But um, but I, I remember visiting people from over out west. And they would say that, that too. Even the simple act of people trying to pick berries, that they would be just uh, ruining the trees and the lack of respect. So she's wanted to throw that comment out there. So thank you, Becky. Any other questions from our, our, our students, attendees? Nothing now, but like to get an Indian name, Hoka. We can definitely, we've been talking about that one too, Dex, man. We, we, in fact, we're thinking almost doing like a cultural type of camp, um, possibly um, in August, I think is a date we've tentatively picked. You know, it, there's some cultural activities. One of them is drum making. And I, I'm also trying to get uh, Tanshi Jeremy into with the, the bow making workshop and, yeah. Yeah. and possibly some other things. But one of those things within that, second third week in august we wanted to do a in addition to the the workshops have like maybe some traditional feasts some individuals that want to get some their their children named themselves named yeah uh, we'll yeah. provide a, a venue uh not myself but individuals like actually tommy earl there, there's some resources that i think uh will benefit everybody because that's part of reclaiming our identity reviving our our, our, our names um, so I definitely want to put that out there to answer your question. So um, we'll have to make sure we we do officially for uh, Becky Ochbagi. Oh, Becky Ochbagi, <laughs> etc. <laughs> uh, like yeah. So um, it doesn't look like we have any other questions from the attendees, but I think we'll conclude. Oh. Hey ha 
Yeah, 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 yeah